afternoon and welcome back to another video how are we all good i hope another little break in the rain so i took the opportunity to get out and uh go for a little rip i think we've got one day this week that's uh gonna be relatively dry but uh take that opportunity to get out the clocks have now uh, changed so we've got a slightly lighter evenings at the moment which is all good just need that nicer weather to come and we'll uh, we will be set for some decent rides cannot wait so today's video you would have already have seen finally got round to getting that new intro in still want to make a few tweaks to it but yeah overall pretty happy with how it came out on a slightly different route today and um, remembered uh, from a few years back this used to be quite a nice little trail for your mountain bike and uh, something that I didn't really take notice of is there's loads of little trails off of this trail so um, definitely going to be somewhere I'm going to be hitting up in some future rides because this is just an absolute epic little trail down here so yeah let's have a chat about my top five upgrades for the Suron now I've got five main ones um, I've also got a couple of bonus ones that I'm going to chuck in there as well because uh, why not So I would say number one and these aren't in any sort of particular order I would probably just go from kind of what I find really useful through to the more practical through to the sort of more performance I guess but my number one the cheapest mod you can probably do but for me saves me an awful lot of time in cleaning and I guess protecting the actual bike as well but yeah my number one upgrade the cheapest upgrade has to be the mud guards so to get the little hugger mud guard that goes over the back wheel so yeah, just a really nice, easy, really, really simple in to install as well. Just literally a couple of bolts to undo, slide it all in place and uh, bolts up it and your job done. Really, really nice and easy. So in at number two, I'm probably gonna have to go with handlebars. The stock bars for my style of riding and my height as well weren't particularly suited. I've said previously this is naturally quite a, a small bike. So if you are on the taller side, uh, you know, six foot and above, then definitely modifications to make the, the ride height a little bit bigger certainly helps. Uh, I do also find I have switched, I mean, these came with uh, the riser bars anyway i did switch back I don't, I don't really like the look of the riser bars i've got to admit and i did switch back to the stock bars but i did find control especially when you're trying to get through tricky sections and mud and it's slippery and having them slightly higher was a massive advantage so so i can't really comment too much on obviously the price of them um i did obviously inherit them with the bike i think i would say you know have a look online but for a decent set of riser bars you're looking about maybe 50 pounds probably less you can probably get some a lot cheaper around 20 30 pounds but i'd say if you set you know 50 pounds as a a benchmark for a decent set then uh I, you'd be looking around there oh that was a massive load of horse shit oh stinks so definitely a worthwhile upgrade again for me again if you're riding different terrain and you're riding on streets and stuff 
I can't really comment. I mean, I can only imagine that it's, st it's still going to give that decent amount of stability. And like I said, it does raise the ride up as well. So again, for the taller rider, I would say the same applies. My one downside to the bars, I really don't like the look of them. Um, when you see different types of surons and modifications on Instagram and YouTube and stuff like that, I definitely prefer a slightly lower bar in terms of the aesthetics, but they do serve a really good purpose and actually, I guess the practicality over styling, it, it does outweigh it, so. So following on from that, I would next say number three has to be the riser seat. Again, I did inherit the seat riser mod on the bike when I bought it. I had test ridden other, other Surons when I was looking to buy one. And uh, yeah, it was extremely, uh, they're fine for a test ride. But I think over time, it probably would be a little bit too small for me. And it was definitely a mod that I was looking at when I was looking to buy a Suron. It was definitely one of the mods that I was actually looking at. That's all right. It's horrible, isn't it? Just praying for that nicer weather to come. <laughs> yeah. No worries at all. But yeah, it was definitely on uh, my list of things of when I actually bought one. It's definitely something I wanted to do to it just to make it a little bit more comfortable for me to ride. So it was a huge bonus. The one, the particular one that's installed on this bike is the Milk Racing Seat Riser Kit. I mean, I've not trialed any others, but you know, I've had the bike now for what, six months? Maybe longer than that. Um, but, yeah, it's, you know, it's a really solid, nice machine bit of metal. I can't ever imagine it, you know, failing on me. So, again, I'm sure there's others out on the market. Um, I can't really comment too much on the cost of it. I think when I did look, uh, they were around maybe 200. Again, you can probably get some a lot cheaper than that. Uh, but milk racing, as you've probably seen, if you've uh, owned a Sauron or if you looked into them, done any research, uh, milk racing, they do make quite a lot of parts of Saurons and they seem to be pretty well respected in the Sauron community. I know Sir wants to put some, uh, some milk racing uh, supermoto wheels on one of his Saurons. And actually as a company as well, um, I've not had to deal with them, but obviously when I post on Instagram and stuff like that, they do see the tags and they're often uh, reposting some of my posts. Uh, so just showing a bit of support, obviously I'm showcasing some of their products. And uh, yeah, it's nice to get a little feature on their Instagram page and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, they always like my stuff and, and comment, so yeah, they seem like a really cool company as well. So I'd say that's pretty much my functional mods that I would definitely recommend. Things that are going to make the ride a little bit easier, a little bit better. I guess my next mods you'd be looking at would be, if you can call them, performance upgrades. Um, again, I'm only talking from my experience with the stuff I ride, you know, off-road you know, 99% of the time. But uh, if you've seen some of my early videos, one of the things that I really needed to to upgrade and it was quite apparent was the, the tires. Grip was coming a massive issue for me. Every time I went out, I was always worried. Well, a couple of times I did fall off, um, but I, yeah, I was always worried that uh, I had to really think about the sort of terrain I was riding and the speed that I could go at as well. Uh, loads of different tyres out on the market. So naturally I wanted to go for the, the thickest 
sort of normally a tyre that I could find. Um, again, done quite a bit of research into it. You can go crazy with tyres, you can spend an extortion amount of money on them. All I really needed something that was going to be sort of a, a, a medium performance tyre. If I do ride it on roads or anything other than off-road, I still needed it to be functional. But I went for the Maxxis. Uh, it's still on the stock rim. I would love to eventually change this down to a 16 inch rim um, and then put a, you know, a nice normally tire on that. Just, I think the look of that, you can go a much wider, much thicker wall. And it does look really, really nice, I've got to admit. Um, but actually for the, the Maxxis tire that I got, it serves the purpose absolutely perfectly. As you can see here, super slippery, super muddy, but it just literally pulls like a train. I get grip whenever I need it. Same with turning as well. It just gives me the maximum amount of grip that I need. So yeah, if you are looking for tires, I would highly, highly recommend the Maxxis tire. Uh, not too badly priced either. I think I paid 60 pound uh, for one. Um, I am looking to get the front tire. I mean, my front tire at the moment Still has plenty of grip on it, uh, but I, I would like to eventually see it at the match in the set. Yeah, that is one of my my future upgrades that I'll be changing the front over as well. But for the time being, uh, that one's serving me quite well. Let you come free. <laughs> That's right. Oh bless, no worries. <laughs> Cheers. Loads of horses out today. So I've just checked on the battery. I was sort of uh, in a little world of my own there, just sort of cruising along and chatting to the camera and realised I'm about 16 miles from home and uh, down to 44% battery. So, uh, I would say we might have to take it a little bit easy on the way back, but when you ride in places like this, you just, you just can't. It's just such great fun. I absolutely love this place, apart from this. So let's rock on to the next one, next top upgrade. And I've got a massive confession with this upgrade. Like I've said before, I'm not a mechanic. I've never worked on bikes. I've, uh, I've no experience with them. But I put the sprocket on this and you can watch the video um, saying how I wasn't impressed with it. <laughs> and after riding a little bit, it seemed to pick up sort of after 10 mile an hour there was this nice little bit of range where it really kick in and i was in the garage the other night just tinkering around and uh doing a bit of maintenance on on, on the bike cheers thank you awful well behaved dogs but yeah uh just doing some maintenance, the brakes and bits and pieces and, and cleaning it up, ready to uh, get some shots for the intro. And it's always bugged me about these, uh, the chain and the chain tensioner. And it's really annoyed me. You know, that it was so far back and I just couldn't work out if it, if it was correct or not. So I decided just to loosen the back wheel, move the back wheel, as far as I possibly could so that the chain was was a lot tighter um, tightened it all back up again so I've got I've still got a little bit of play in the chain but nowhere near as much as I had um, and like I said when I inherited this bike everything was set up apart from the sprocket and stuff and the chain was always a little bit loose um, there was always a little bit of play in it so I just thought I'd move the wheel back play around with the chain tension I get get that chain nice and tight again still with just that little bit of movement in it and uh, yeah take it for a test ride see see how that fared 
And my God, what a difference that made. And what an idiot I feel. There's me just saying that, you know, it wasn't instant power and really just didn't make the biggest difference for me. And it was all my fault. I just completely set it up wrong. And this is the first ride out that I've had with it set up what I would class as probably correctly and not the way I had it before. And oh man, it's just, it's instant now. So yeah, my next, my next top upgrade has got to be the sprocket. Now there's loads of different types of sprocket, different teeth, different materials and different prices. I went for the 56 tooth, kind of went on a bit of recommendation from other people. Obviously Matt Francis put a really cool video out on, the, on his sprocket and done some pretty cool tests with it for the, uh, the top end and he wasn't losing much top end and obviously a, a huge gain in acceleration. So I kind of went off of his advice. And then yeah, obviously to my surprise, I'm like, what is he talking about? This just, it's not all that. And it did grow on me and I, de I definitely was picking up speed in that mid range from 10 mile an hour upwards. And I can only put this down to the fact that that chain just wasn't tensioned properly it just i was losing so much in the first bit of acceleration due to the slack on it and that's why once it did obviously tighten up and i was starting to move that's when i was getting the, the decent amount of acceleration i don't know again i am not a mechanic i don't really know about that but uh, that would be my if i had to hedge a bet that would be why being out on it today and just giving it a again i guess probably a a first review <laughs> um, yeah amazing upgrade price wise I think I paid somewhere around 40 pounds oh. oh thank god this is coming to an end but yeah I paid around 40 pounds for the sprocket and then I think I paid around I think it's about 15 quid for the chain obviously the bigger the sprocket the bigger the chain you need so you will have to upgrade that as well again not a massively expensive upgrade but definitely one that uh, makes a huge difference cheers thank you main top upgrade cheap upgrades as well i wouldn't class any of those as particularly expensive not when you compare batteries that are going to cost thousands and controllers that are going to cost thousands and suspension upgrades which are you know can be thousands when you're looking at sort of fox 40s and things like that these are just minor little upgrades that do make a huge difference in my eyes but Let's give you some little bonus ones. One little mod that I absolutely love, and I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm sure it's gonna save a bit of battery as well, is a light switch. Again, super, super cheap, probably under a tenner. You can get some real fancy ones, I inherited one that wasn't on the bike, but he just gave it to me as a, a spare part. But riding like this today, when I'm out for a long, long ride, and I want as much power, and I want, you know, I want the battery to last as long as possible. Having the battery switched off, which is obviously going to draw current and uh, is going to use battery, has to be an advantage. They're plug and play. It's literally a case of connecting it straight into the connections that are already there. But yeah, it's just nice to have the option to have it on or off. 
So my last upgrade then that we'll talk about just whilst we're taking our slow little route home will be the graphics kit. Why not? Um, probably one of the most expensive things that I've done to the bike. Um, I think I paid somewhere 120 pound, I think, for the graphics kit. I love the look of Surons. I don't like the silver frame. That's just one thing that, uh, obviously when I was looking around, I only had silver ones available to me. Um, but in the back of my mind, I, I wasn't too worried. I, I knew that I'd be putting a, a, a sticker set or a graphics kit, whatever you want to call it, on there at some point. Um, and it took me probably a good two months to research them and find out which ones I liked and which ones I didn't like. And uh, I was going to go with a colour and then I could obviously then put, you know, anodized parts onto match and stuff. But I just really like the black and white. I think this looks really cool. Not great for this style of riding because it just gets filthy dirty so the white doesn't stay white. But I do really, really like the look of it. So there we are. That's my uh, top modifications my top upgrades that i've done and would do to the Suron. chucked a couple of uh, little bonus ones in there as well so thanks ever so much for watching hit that like button hit that subscribe button trying to get videos out every thursday thanks very much and i will see you in the next one take it easy